you don't have life. You're the one you have to get if involved. you are not Stop in Christ, the Bible you're says the that you, you are dead involved. in trespass and sin. The scripture says, lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions. There is a holy and a righteous God. Everyone believes in God. Everyone knows God. But we don't have a saving belief until God would give you that saving faith. God will give you that repentance unto life. Yep. Your yep. crime, your sin yep. separates you yep. from God. Yep. The Bible says you're an enemy of God by yep. nature. Hey, you separate from God. Jesus. You must return to God in Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. He says, without Him, nothing was made that was made. God commands you to repent and to believe in the Gospel. If you don't do so, you're abiding in His indignation. He will consume you. My God is fire of hell. Fuck your God. God is holy, and he says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will also reap. If we sow to the flesh, of the flesh reap corruption. If you sow to the Spirit, he will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. He who has of his commands falls upon us without measure. The substitute, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the Son of God, he became flesh and obeyed those commands, and in the law place, of the guilty sinner bore the sin and the penalty so that wrath, holy, divine wrath would be pacified for those who would believe. Outside of the sacrifice of Christ, there's nothing but wrath and the ruthless execution of God's judgment that hangs over your head because he's a just God. He'll by no means clear the guilty. God hates the ungodly with a perfect righteous hatred and loves his enemies with a general love as his creature. But there is a day he'll cut you off from the land of the living. You need to be saved from God. Jesus is the Savior. God has provided the means whereby you must be saved through faith in his Son because he did all the work, not through religious works, not through your own efforts. You must be born again. Embrace, kiss the Son. Must he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. It is appointed for you to die. The federal head damned the human race. African, Caucasian, Asian, doesn't matter what country you're from, what nationality you are, you must be born again or you're going to be eternally destroyed. You've got to be born of the life of Christ. You need the life of Christ. See, most, see, the, the professing pastor in the church you probably attend is a spiritual whore. He won't talk to you like this because he doesn't want you, he's going to worry about you coming back. He's going to appease your ears to tell you things about God so you keep coming back. That's a lie. That, that's a sign of the end times. If they're not talking to you like this and what the Word of God really says, they're not doing you any favors. Friends, you want syrup in your ears, you can turn on the TV and listen to Joe Lostein or the Pope and go to hell with him. You call me out again, you're going to have problems. Somebody. See, God commands you to repent. Don't call me out again. Yeah. God okay. demands your you allegiance me? with him. You understand me? There's a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof are the time. ways of death. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. In Jesus' name. See, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will also reap. Everyone will give an account of himself to God. So you need a perfect righteousness. That's only imputed by faith alone. Our righteousness, we're all like an unclean thing. And all of our righteousness is filthy rags. Internally, we are corrupt. Internally, every human being is evil. There's none who does good, no, not one. Every person is at enmity with God. Every person outside of Christ is an Adam that's dead in sins. Sin is a moral disease, like a moral cancer that infects the soul. It's, it, it destroys the body and the soul. If a doctor showed you a tumor in your liver that was cancerous and you needed to get cut out, you don't, you're not passive about that. If you're going to die from some serious fatal disease, physical disease, you go to a physician for the remedy of the disease. And you want that trained physician to tell you how to get cured from that disease. Folks, you can't even handle a stomach flu for 24 hours or a head cold or a virus without some type of home remedy, Tylenol, or some type of remedy, so you, so you would not be, you'd be relieved of your discomfort. You'd be relieved of the agony of a temporal sickness. Imagine how severe a cancerous tumor would be 
in your body. And how happy you'd be if you found out it could be cured. Now think about how severe sin is. That sin not only destroys the body, but destroys both soul and body in hell. And be sure that your sin will find you out. Each one of us needs to be saved from our sins. We cannot be saved from our sins by anything that we do by any means. The Lord Jesus Christ came. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement for our peace is upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed alone. He was punished in the place of the ungodly. His blood was shed for the remission of sins. Do you have Christ or not? Or not. Folks, you, your sin will find you out. And don't be not deceived, God is not mocked. You consider your ways tonight. He says, consider this, you who forget God, and you heap up greater condemnation upon yourselves as you continue to mock and blaspheme, rejoice in iniquity. He says, love does not rejoice in iniquity, it rejoices in the truth. And God is exposing your hearts, manifest, the manifestation of your wicked heart that loves evil, loves drugs over God. You boast in filthy drugs and sorcery over God and worship the devil. And you give glory to sin. But in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's the grace of God that brings salvation to appear to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he'll reap. Each one of us will give an account to God. Every one of us has sinned against the Holy God countless times. God has been merciful and gracious, slow to anger and of great kindness. You're going to give an account to God personally. No one's going to plead your cause. You live without Christ in your sin. You're accruing more on your account, fattening your heart for the day of slaughter. You need to come out of darkness and come to the Savior to be reconciled to God and forgiven and made right with God. That is through the cross God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God destroys all who forsake him. He says the wicked will be cut down like grass, and whether there's a green herb, God will just punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. They'll be turned into everlasting torments in the hell in the lake of fire. It's the anger of God, the judgment of God, fully executed upon the sinner at the tribunal of God. The great white throne of judgment. Anyone not found in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. For the Lord will come with fire and with the chariots like keep the whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. He will say, bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. How, where do you stand with God tonight? Where do you stand with the Holy God? Are you in Christ? Is your name registered in the book of life? Have you come to Christ in godly repentance and a sorrow to God for your life of whoredom and abominable idolatry and wickedness and seeing the cross of Christ as your only hope to re reconcile you to God? If not, you are in great danger, folks. Flee from the wrath that each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he's done, whether good or evil. Folks, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation that will devour the adversaries. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay and again the Lord will judge his people. And judgment begins at the house of God, that is a professing church. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of them who obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous be scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Folks, how will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? Flee from the wrath to come. That's the wrath of a holy God poured upon the world and upon the ungodly. You flee to the cross of Christ now. Don't harden your hearts. Return to the Lord your God. Christ suffered once for sins on the cross. He was penalized as a substitute for his people once and for all. He rose from the dead. He conquered Satan, sin in the grave. In him we have eternal life. Outside of him there's nothing but recompense. Ruthless judgment. Turn from your evil ways. Cast down your idols. Turn your faces away from all of your abominations tonight. For now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is. It is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. 
God hates the idolatry. God hates wickedness. He loves righteousness. We must understand whom we've reproached and blasphemed, against whom we've lifted our voice, against whom we've mocked as a holy God of Israel. He says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. God is going to bring more condemnation upon those who would rejoice in the iniquity and the filthiness around uh, here today that will blaspheme God and his word. Wrath has come upon those to the uttermost who hinder the gospel and pervert the word of God and take away and add to the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be saved personally from God himself as your judge, as your king. The one, you, the one who gave you breath and life and all that you have, you have, a, you have usurped his authority. You have lived in cosmic treason against him. You have forsaken him, exchanged him for the lie. You worship and serve creature and not creator. And there's a day of devastation that's going to be at hand upon all the nations, upon the ungodly. The Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. To convince all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. What think ye of Christ? What have you done with Jesus? Have you received him? Have you come to him with all your heart? In godly repentance, sorrow to God and a broken and contrite spirit knowing how evil you've been to God, knowing all the wrongs you've done to God and you've seen Christ as your only hope, the only mediator between God and man, the only one who is qualified as the substitute to suffer the penalty for sin under the wrath of God and absorb that? Friend, your only hope is Jesus of Nazareth, the eternal Son of God. He is the Jesus of Scripture, not the Jesus of Islam or Roman Catholicism or any religious cult. He is the Son of God who created the world. Not a created being, but the co-creator of the universe. For of Him, and to him and through him are all things to whom belong the glory forever and ever i am the lord that is my name and i will not share my glory with another nor my praise the graven image and look at the graven image right here that we praise every game we take pictures of every game we are looking at a graven image and giving that glory over the one who is worthy of all glory which is the god of heaven the holy one of whom seraphim the burning ones cry day and night, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is and who was and who is to come. They can't even look upon the face of God. And these are the most holy creatures in all of creation. If one of these were manifested in front of you, you would die. You'd be consumed by the burning fire of this creature. And that thing is just a creature of God. The creator, there is no comparison. There's no contrast. He is royally above all. There's nothing opposite of him. He is. He is all in all. Christ says, look up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Why do you boast in evil, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Fools mock at sin. It's abominable. You are an abomination to the Lord apart from Christ. Naturally, the proud in heart are an abomination of God. The wicked, the way of the wicked is an abomination of the Lord. You are loathsome in the eyes of God. Without Christ in you, the hope of glory. He said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Come out from among them and be ye separate, declares the Lord. Touch not what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. But woe to the rebellious and polluted city. Woe to those who are rebellious and polluted. He said this in Obadiah. Woe to the oppressing city. She's not obeyed the voice. She's not received correction. She's not trusted in the Lord. She's not drawn near to her God. That goes for you. You've not drawn near to the Lord. You've not obeyed his voice. He calls. You don't answer. But he will show you the back end, not the face, in the day of your calamity, the day of your trouble. He'll hide his eyes and his ears from your prayers. But today, if you hear his voice, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Cast down your idols. Turn from all of your transgressions before iniquity becomes your ruin. Flee from the wrath to come. Come to Christ. Jesus is coming the second time to kill his enemies. He's coming to, as a destroyer of nations. 
He says, my determination is to gather the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat and enter into judgment with them there. I, he says, oh, I will rid myself of my adversaries. Folks, he reserves wrath for his enemies. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, declares the Lord again. The Lord will judge his people. And judgment begins at the house of God. There's a professing church, the professor, uh, the, believing, or the believer in Christ. If it begins with us first, what will be the end of them who obey not the gospel of God? If the righteous be scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Turn and live. If you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery I'm indignation. Then read this again. Thank you, sir. You read this again. Edify you, okay? And you give it to somebody else that's lost. Okay, you, if you're a believer, you read the tracks. Any believer, if you're a believer here tonight, you read the tracks. It's going to encourage you. That's a great gospel track. Brother, brother of mine, uh, Bill, he was an ex police officer, retired. That's a great gospel paper there. Look at it. She's playing the whole gospel. Hallelujah. Enjoy that word. Yeah. All we have is Christ. To live is Christ. That's right. But to know him is eternal life. Begins now and for all of eternity. When he saves you, he saves you out of darkness, calls you in his own kingdom. You'll never be separated from the love of God. You're in the love of God forever. The joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passes all understanding. You're in a eternal covenant with God through Christ. By faith. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. How's your relationship with the Lord? Have you come to Christ? You're not good. You're in great danger, son. If you're out of Christ, you're under the wrath of a holy God. You will burn in a devil's hell. Of life you think about how long the line is to get in the ballpark, get around the building. How long will it be when you stand before the tribunal of God, the great white throne of judgment for the ungodly, for the unholy dead that get raised to damnation? They have their secrets exposed, their sins revealed before all of creation to the praise of the glory of God's justice and your damnation to hell if you do not surrender all to Christ, if you've not been born of the Spirit of God. So this is the gospel of how you can be saved from sin. You've sinned against the holy God. You know that by your conscience. All the laws of God written upon the heart. Universally, we know that. First commandment is, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Well, the greatest sin of the human race is idolatry. We worship people, place, and things over God, make them into our gods. But there's one true God who created all things. And today, especially the Lord's day, to be consecrated to Him and worship Him and exalt Him. And we've exchanged it with a lie. And we're worshiping everything else. Our minds are set on things here, and temporal things. We have not been born of the divine nature to set our minds on things above. So idolatry is the greatest crime of the human race. We worship idols. God hates idolatry. It's a testimony in the eyes of God. The God who created the heavens and the earth. He holds your breath in his hand. He owns your ways. He's given you everything you have, but you have rejected him and despised the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering. Not knowing the goodness of God should lead you to repentance. And in this condition, you are his enemy. In this condition, you're under great wrath and judgment. When you die in the body in that condition, there'll be nothing but ruthless judgment. You'll be thrown in the lake of fire. There'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. You'll be destroyed by God himself as this creature that rejected him as a creator and went its own way. So Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we come to Christ to be reconciled to God. This is a message of reconciliation, not condemnation. The Bible says, he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Light shines in the darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend that. God is light in him. There's no darkness at all. Our hearts, is darkness is... is type of sin we're full of sin and wickedness so we need to be saved and christ when he dwells in us exposes the darkness and it comes they cannot dwell together they cannot be in unity together so each one of us will give an account of ourselves to god now there's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with god he's perfect his requirements are perfect obedience to his commands all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god the law of God written upon your heart and shows your disobedience, brings you to Christ as a tutor to show your desperate need, that you need a perfect Savior, and God himself in the flesh, Christ, suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust to bring us. It's by nature a child of wrath, we're cursed of God. We must understand our condition before God to see how great God's love is and what he has done to save people from sin, to bring them back to himself, to magnify all of his attributes, that through the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ satisfied the justice of God. He propitiated the wrath of God for his people. The scripture declares that God made him to be sin for us, 
who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now most of us here today have come to the game tonight and got down here early for whatever giveaway there is. You get another idol in your house, in your life. You make sure that you have your ticket on you to get in the stadium tonight because you don't have it, you won't get in this ballpark no matter how hard you try. So you make sure you have your ticket on you. As you go before that gate, you don't have it, you get turned away. What do you do when you stand before a holy God without Christ and all the sin on your account, all the evil thoughts, the words, the deeds you've done will be exposed, the secrets of your heart before your grandmother, before your family, your friends, all of creation, to see why your damnation will be just. This is why you need to be saved. That's why you need to come to Christ before it's too late, that God is holy and he destroys all who forsake him and he by no means equip the wicked, that God is just. And the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. If you don't have Christ, are you as sure as you are tonight that you're here at this ballpark? Are you that sure about the salvation of your soul? If you die tonight, would you be in the kingdom of God? Are you saved? Every second two people die, the majority are going to hell. Rod is the way that leads to destruction. Wide is the gate. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Many will go therein. Narrow is a gate that the way that leads to life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's one God, the holy God of Israel. He made the heavens and the earth. You and I are covenant breakers, transgressors of his law, and need to be redeemed from the curse of the law. That's what Christ came to do by living the perfect sinless life, to lay down his life for his people, for his friends, all who would believe upon him. He paid the penalty for sin in him. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, as anyone should boast. It is appointed for men once to die, but after this is the judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ was also offered once to bear the sins of many. For those who wait for him, he will come again a second time, apart from sin for salvation. Each one of us will give an account of ourselves to God. There's none righteous, no, not one. You're unclean, you're reviled, you're abominable, you drink iniquity like water. As a human being, you're born in sin, you're born in Adam. The things that are highly esteemed among men are detestable, are an abomination in the eyes of a holy God. His ways are higher than our ways, his ways are not our ways. He created you, he holds your breath in his hand, he owns your ways. You've not glorified him, you've exchanged him for the lie that is your indictment. You're under wrath, you're under judgment, the penalty is eternal damnation in hell. You need Christ. Do you have Christ? Are you born again? The wages of sin is death, the soul who sins it shall die. It's the mercy of God that's keeping you out of hell right now. Your foot will slip in due time. He says, the day of your calamity is at hand. The things that shall come upon you make haste. He will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. All the pride of man will be humbled. The loftiness of men will be bowed down. The Lord alone will be exalted on that day. He will destroy his enemies, folks. You're an enemy of God. You're not a child of God. You're not a friend of God. So you've come to Christ. And you've been grafted in. It's by faith alone that Christ... Jesus, the Son of God, became man, lived a perfect life. He could not live to lay down his life, to suffer on the cross, to pay the penalty in full for the sins of all the Father gave him. So in him we have life. This life is a light of men. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So you may be comfortable, feel very good, be very happy, be healthy, be wealthy. Got a lot of things going for you, achieved a lot in this life but at the same time be on the way to burn in the devil's hell. If you're still in your natural condition, if you're still in Adam, you're born in Adam, corruptible seed. The body rots to dust. God will raise it from the dead outside of Christ. to be given a supernatural body to suffer the vengeance of God and the glory of his justice in hell. Jesus is the only hope for you or anybody in the world because he paid the penalty for sin and absorbed the wrath of God. If you're outside of Christ right now, just like you're out of the stadium, to get in, you've got to have a valid ticket with today's game on it. Not tomorrow's, not yesterday's. Today, you've got to have this ticket, this game, or you get turned away. You won't go through the scanner. You stand before God without Christ, he will throw you in hell, and with his wailing and gnashing of teeth, you'll wish you were never born. You will be eternally destroyed. It's more important than anything you have in this life. It's more important. You need this more than your pulse right now, because you're dead without Christ. There's nothing you have. You're going to lose everything. It's your pride that will stay between you and God. 
Don't worry about what people think about you. How about God? How about the one who created the world? How about the one who owns all things? Who's going to rule the heavens and the earth forever? He's coming again to judge this world. He will slaughter his enemies. He comes a second time in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Repent and believe in the gospel. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. That spiritual birth is a life of Christ given to you by God. God works repentance in your heart. He calls you with an effectual call that goes into the depths of your soul. Will you cry out to God for mercy upon you as a sinner? You are a wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked, spiritually bankrupt sinner that needs a Savior and He's mighty to save. You live without Christ, you're under the wrath of God. You forsake God, you'll be consumed. Return to the Lord your God. Come to the cross today. Don't harden your hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. Are you right with God? Is your name registered in the book of life? Are you sure that you are saved as sure as you are? That you have a ticket to get in the ballpark tonight? You know for sure you got here physically, you arrived. You made it here without getting lost. But you are lost apart from Christ. You're on the broad way of destruction. Yes, you attend church regularly, but you're on the way to hell. The majority of churchgoers today know not Christ, have not been born again. They're under a hireling, a spiritual prostitute that pretends to be a pastor, that lies to you about God and tells you what you want to hear, that God loves you, wants to save you no matter what you do. And that's not the God of Scripture, a holy and just God that will destroy his enemies because he's good and you must come to him on his terms. And he destroyed his son, he crushed his son, he pleased the Lord to crush his son on a Roman cross where you bore the wrath and the hatred of God for all who believe upon him. That's why the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God. You can't earn this. You can't do anything for it. Realize you're, just like if a doctor showed you had a tumor in your brain, a cancerous tumor in your body, and you're going to die, and you got to get it cut out. You don't mock the doctor. We're not passive about it. For such a disease or a diagnosis, you'd be terrified. How much worse is sin? You can have any cure of any disease on the earth, but if you don't get your sin cured, it's both soul and body destroyed forever in the lake of fire. And Christ procured salvation. By his stripes we are healed. His blood was shed for the remission of sins. He commands you to repent. Pledge your allegiance to the King of glory. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Do you understand? Has anybody told you how wicked you really are, how vile you really are, and how in danger you are? The ruthless judgment of God, hard thing to talk about in a beautiful afternoon like this. In a comfortable society, in a wealthy and a healthy society like this, to tell soul, to tell you right now as you stand here, that you're on the way to burn in a devil's hell, you've rejected Christ, now repent and live. You don't need Christ, right? You got a lot of money, got a great job, you're fine. Wrong! Without Christ, you're nothing. You have nothing at all to offer God. You must come to the cross. You need to be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. This is not a message of condemnation. Scripture says that we, he who does not believe in him is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light unless their deeds be reproved. He who does the truth comes to the light that their deeds may be clearly seen. They have been wrought in God. Jesus is the truth. Apart from him, you're living a lie. Your whole life is a lie. It's vanity. It's vexation of spirit. It says all is vanity and that grasping for the wind. Folks, we came to the world naked. We're going to return there. For dust we are, dust we shall return. We're of all one blood, every tongue, tribe, and nation. In sin your mother conceived you, you were shaped in an iniquity. By and through the fall of one man, the whole human race was condemned. But through the obedience of one man, Jesus Christ, all who believe will be saved and have eternal life. This life is in the Son of God. Come to me, he says, I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near, let the wicked forsake his ways. 
And the unrighteous man his thoughts, let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. There is a way that seems right to a man, the end thereof, the ways of death. Why don't you come to Christ before it's too late? It's going to be a lot louder in hell for the unbeliever. The Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. To convince all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So each one of us needs to be saved in Christ from the judgment and the holy hatred of God. Jesus said, you must be born again. As many as received him to them, he gave the power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me what it shows so wonderful. Found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my fear? Nothing but the blood.